What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm gonna show you how I made these beautiful, delicious, smoky, fermented, amazing smoked beef cheeks with homemade kimchi. And yes, a kimchi wrapped beef cheek Texas style barbecue fold over. Coming up. This is some meat. Pat it dry. And what I got here is an old friend of the show, some good old fashioned classic beef cheeks. And to be honest with you, I was just craving some beef cheeks. Hadn't had them in a while. I suppose I could have just gone to Leroy and Lewis, but they're a pretty fun, easy cook. So if you've never seen beef cheek meat before, it is a pretty gnarly looking cut, you know, very scraggly. So we got to do some trimming and clean up. But the first thing I always like to do is just separate all the bits that I know are not an actual cheek like that. Set that aside, set that one aside. Anything's hanging on by a strand like that, not a beef cheek. That one definitely, it could cook up and slice but it would not be ideal so into the scrap pile we go and what we're really looking for is these nice big round pieces of pure muscle they've always got this little seam right there and all you need to do is follow that seam take off this big silver skin fat layer and there is a beef cheek do the same for this one over here yeah beef cheek number two that's a big boy so out of those two packages it looks like i've got two beef cheeks which is why i've got two more packages sometimes you get two sometimes you get three there we go trim off that big flap of silver skin right there you can tell this is all fat right there and that's nice meat down there there's two more and we got another pack just for good measure Ooh, that's a big boy yep only one cheek in that bag so if you are going to do this i recommend picking up more than you think unless you're just trying to make barbacoa then you can use all this for that and there we go five big old beef cheeks and now we need to just go through and clean these up a little bit take off any of this fat or silver skin on the top side and just kind of give them some nice shape you know anything dangling off like that just kind of you know Give it a nice little clean up, make them look pretty. As far as the super thin silver skin on the back, don't need to worry about that. That will totally break down. There we go. That is a nicely trimmed up, beautiful little beef cheek. And again, if you're just planning on shredding this up at the end, you don't have to do any of this. Just open it up, hit it with some seasoning, throw it on the pit. You can check out my barbacoa videos for that. But we're doing an homage to Leroy and Lewis today. So we're gonna be trying to make some sliced beef cheeks because they're super tasty. And there we go. Nice, beautiful, trimmed up beef cheeks. Let's get these things seasoned up. And also this is all the trim. Most of it is trim, but have no fear. I will be cooking this down into some barbacoa. You know, there's still a lot of good meat in there, just not an actual individual cheek. So we'll probably cook this at the same time. And as for our rub today, I'm gonna go with the classic SPG, starting with two parts, 16 mesh, black pepper on sale now, shopchuds.com, two one part diamond crystal kosher salt, and half part granulated garlic. It's a classic for a reason, folks. And no binders or anything. These are still pretty moist. But I'm just gonna hit them with a nice heavy coating all the way around because we really wanna make sure we build up a beautiful bark on these. So a lot of black pepper is gonna help with that. But you just wanna make sure that you don't forget the sides because that would be a rookie move. And there we go. Those are looking pretty much perfect to me. Let's prop the pit. Check it out, folks. I'm selling fire starters now. Get yourself some Chud's Barbecue Snake Nests on sale now at shopchuds.com. in my boot. And on the pit we go. There's a thicker side, aim that towards the firebox. I'm gonna rock this pit probably around 275, might even go a little hotter. We're just trying to build up some good bark, cook these through a little bit and get some nice smoke on them. So we'll check back in in a few hours. All right, folks, it's been about four hours. Nice and barky, nice color on there. All that rub is adhered. So now into this vessel they go. Look like little meteorites. Still got it. Definitely shrunk up quite a bit. I mean, that first one is still pretty gigantic for a beef cheek. Looks like a mini brisket. And again, I'm not looking at all for internal temp. I'm just looking for barkiness. I mean, if we did temp this, it would probably be around 180, 190 maybe. 175. Some beef tallow. This is the very same tallow that I used to confit the Swidero tacos the other week. And yes, you can reuse this stuff as many times as you want before it starts getting too dirty. I'd say probably max it out at maybe three or four times. Oh yeah, just get those nice and submerged. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of the fresh stuff too, just to make sure these are completely submerged. And there we go. And into a 200 degree oven this goes overnight. This video is brought to you by Zbiotics. 
Z-Biotics is the world's first genetically engineered pre-alcohol probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle those rough mornings after drinking. Give it a nice little shake, pop it open, Mm. And make sure that's your first drink of the night. And then you can go ahead and enjoy a night out and wake up feeling refreshed the next morning. And basically what happens when you drink alcohol is alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in your gut. And it's that, not dehydration, that's to blame for the rough next morning. But Zbiotics produces an enzyme that breaks that toxic byproduct down. It's basically designed to work just like your liver does, but in your gut where it's needed most. It's really quite simple. Make one of these your first drink of the night, have a fun time out, get a good night of sleep, drink some water, and you'll wake up feeling refreshed the very next day. And I can tell you it works. Cinco de Mayo was not too long ago. And let's just say we had a couple of tequilas down at the old Chud Shop but I made sure to have a Z-Biotics first and I woke up the next day feeling A-OK, -okay, ready to face the day and continue on with my busy lifestyle. Memorial Day is approaching fast, but don't be scared about having a good time because you have to work the next morning or something like that because Z-Biotics has you covered. So if you want to try Z-Biotics for yourself, go to zbiotics.com slash chudsbarbecue or scan the QR code on the screen right now to get 15% off your order when you use code chudsbbq at checkout. Again, I'll have a link in the description box of this video taking you to zbiotics.com slash chudsbbq or you can use code chudsbbq you at checkout to save 15% off your first order. Thank you, Zbiotics. So our beef chicks have been in confit overnight. They are definitely nice and tender at this point. They are still riding in there. But before we go and pull those out, we need to talk about the next element of this dish, which is in fact, kimchi. Because for all of you who are unaware, I have been working very closely with Leroy and Lewis Barbecue Food Truck here in Austin, Texas for the last like six years. And when I was working on that truck, my favorite bite was always to grab a nice big piece of kimchi, a nice tender smoky slice of their smoked beef cheek, top that with a little beet barbecue sauce, sometimes make a fold over, sometimes just skip the bread and throw it back. That's how I would start every shift. It's an amazing bite. It really is a great combination of flavors. And that's the whole point of this video is kind of paying homage to one of my favorite bites in barbecue but making kimchi takes a few days. But luckily, I got started last week. This is some cabbage. Just some Napa cabbage. Picked this up at my grocery store. Honestly, not the best looking Napa I've seen. Kind of wilty, little bit dirty, but you know what? We're gonna be fermenting this and wilting it down anyway, so I don't think it's gonna be a problem. So first things first, we need to cut these up. Beautiful. I love ripping these in half, it's fun. I feel like Captain America splitting wood. And at this point, you can really decide how big you want your kimchi to be. At Leroy and Lewis, we would take this, split it in half one more time, and then go through and chop it up till it's, you know, a little one by two inch squares. But today we're going for whole leaf kimchi. So I'm gonna leave it just like this. And the first thing we need to do is get this salted to dry out some of the moisture and weep these leaves down a little bit. So into a vessel here, we're going in with our cabbage and we're gonna grab a bunch of salt and just go in between each leaf, nice and heavy. Really don't have to worry about over salting it because we're gonna rinse this at the end, but we wanna make sure that we're getting every layer and we'll repeat i'm doing two heads of cabbage as you saw and you always want to start out with a little bit more than you think because once this stuff shrinks down and starts to ferment it'll look like a lot less than it does right now all right there we go now everything is nice and salted i'm gonna let this sit like this in this tub for probably two hours i'm gonna go ahead and rotate these flip them around every now and then maybe massage the leaves help them break down a little bit make sure that salt is getting everywhere we need it to go it's about three hours and one weather change later. And let's take a look at this cabbage, shall we? As you can see, it is much smaller, much more wilted. That salt really did a good job. I've come through, flipped it, and kind of squeezed it, wrung them out a little bit periodically. And even though it's green, it's starting to look a little bit more like kimchi. But at this point, what we need to do is give this a very thorough rinse between all the layers, just to make sure that this stuff isn't incredibly salty, because right now it most certainly is. So I'm gonna go rinse this off and we'll be right back. Kimchi is rinsed and draining. And while that does that, let's go ahead and bust out our kimchi paste real quick. So into this here blender, I'm gonna go in with one small white onion in a small knob of ginger, peeled, and a whole bunch of some garlic. Give that a quick little blend. Next up, I'm going in with half of an Asian pear. That's just gonna add a little bit of sweetness. Next up, going in with about a half cup or so of some fish sauce. Smells terrible. Tastes great. Next up, going in with some powdered shrimp. You can use dried shrimp, shrimp paste, those little dehydrated guys, whatever you want. And then, of course, we gotta go in with our gochugaru. This is Korean chili flakes. Great color and some wonderful flavor, and yes, a little bit of kick. And get it all blended up. Beautiful. 
nice and red, nice and thick. I did add about a cup of water in there just to loosen it up enough to actually spin, but smelling good. As long as you got a lot of garlic, a little bit of ginger, onion, and all that gochugaru, you can pretty much do whatever you want with kimchi, but I must say, I love how red it is. I got some scallions over here that I'm gonna slice up, cut off any of those dead tips. And we'll throw those in there as well. And you can also throw whatever other veg in here you like, you know, daikon, carrots, whatever. But at this point, aim of the game is to get this kimchi paste all over and all throughout this cabbage. So we're just gonna go in between each leaf and put a nice little smear. Definitely don't wanna be too shy about this stuff. Just even coverage all over. It's starting to look like kimchi already. And there we go. And now it's time to put these into a vessel of our choosing. I'm going with this big old glass jar. Drop them in. And I'm gonna go ahead and shove these down. And I did clean out this jar with some white vinegar beforehand just to make sure it was, you know, sterile, nice and clean. So there's no weird bacteria or dirt or anything in there. So at this point, we're gonna let this ferment for the next few days, maybe up to a week. And as it ferments, it's gonna start bubbling up. Everything's gonna kind of meld together. It's gonna to get that nice kind of sour flavor going on. We're gonna see some bubbles forming up the side, but it is gonna build up pressure. So every few days or every day or so, I'm gonna come and just kind of burp it a little bit, relieve some pressure out of the top. So we'll check back in in a couple days, maybe let it go for a week, maybe even two. We will find out. Seven days later. Let's see how our kimchi is looking. Now I let this ferment on my countertop at room temp for I think four, maybe five days. And it was a super active fermentation. I had to come and crack the lid twice a day because I could see it starting to bulge. And this thing definitely would have exploded if I had just let it sit there. But after about four or five days, this started to look nice and liquidy. Everything really condensed together and was really starting to look like kimchi, smelled great. So I popped it in the fridge and it's been in there for the last two days. And I'm very excited to see how it came out. I have yet to try it. Ooh, there you go. Oh, that smells like some good kimchi right there. And in retrospect, I think I used a little bit too much kimchi paste because it's looking very red, but I think it'll be just fine. Ooh, yeah, that is very red. Looking nice though, feeling nice and soft. Definitely got that kind of fizzy fermentation smell to it. And it's all still in big leaf form, which is exactly what we're after. Oh, beautiful stuff. Mm -hmm. mm. That is phenomenal. Man, that's got so much flavor to it. And I'm sure there's gonna be someone in the comments saying I didn't do this right or it's not authentic, but this tastes really good to me. A lot of flavor, perfect texture, still nice and juicy. Highly recommend making your own kimchi at least once, folks. It is phenomenal stuff. And after a very long confit, let's see how these beef cheeks came out. And you definitely don't need to let these go as long as I did. That was just because of laziness and scheduling conflict, but probably a good four hours is really all you need. And out they come, looking nice and barky, still holding their shape. And these are looking absolutely beautiful. Oh yeah, that jiggle jiggle. I mean, it just looks like a tiny little brisket, doesn't it, folks? If you could feel it, it's got so much jiggle factor to it. If y'all haven't made beef cheeks yet, I highly recommend it. But let's see how these came out, shall we? The pressure of the knife alone is all you need. Oh my goodness. So beefy, so tender, unbelievable. Beautiful smoke ring on there as well. Beautiful little burn end, nice and barky. Just, I mean, just look at this. Ugh. Come on, folks. Mix this up, make yourself some barbacoa instantly or keep it in slice form for that beautiful bite. Oh, love it. Let's give this a little quick taste, shall we? Nope. Mm. Oh my God, it's so rich, it's so sticky, it's so, mm, so beefy. But we're not just making beef cheeks today, folks. We're making beef cheek kimchi wraps. So a nice whole leaf from our kimchi. Take a nice couple of slices of this beautiful meat. And we're just gonna roll this up like a little doobie. Folding the edges, it's just like wrapping a brisket in paper, folks. And there we have it. Not the most attractive looking thing in the world, but the flavor is all gonna be there. It's like a lettuce wrap, but made with beef and kimchi. Like, if you really think about it, it makes sense. Couple of beautiful beef cheek slices in the middle and just roll them up nice and tight. Love it. Boop. And of course, we're gonna top this with some Leroy and Lewis beet barbecue sauce. Also now at LeroyandLewisBarbecue.com, but uh, clearly I've run empty and uh, I know a guy, so I get it by the cord. Ooh, nice healthy drizzle. Oh, love that. And if you know Evan Leroy like I do, you know he's a big fan of garnishes. So we're gonna go ahead and top this with a little onion cilantro mix just for that color because you can't have anything go ungarnished. And there it is, folks, in all its glory. The beef cheek kimchi wrap fold over. I mean, what's not to like here, folks? Beautiful, smoky, 
sparky and possibly tender meat with some homemade kimchi all put together into a kimchi wrapped beef cheek fold over. Oh, I gotta dive in. Not gonna lie to you folks, I've been wanting to make this for a long time because it looks like a little turd in a blanket, but it's gonna taste like absolute heaven. Let's not waste any more time. Mmm. Oh yeah. Mmm. That is just a bite of pure happiness right there. Mm, so smoky, so beefy. Yet all the garlic and ginger and everything from the kimchi is coming through, all tied together with that beautiful Leroy and Lewis beef barbecue sauce. Adding a little bit of heat, a little bit of sweet. Mm, oh, the amount of flavor going on in that bite is just out of control. Wow. So Evan, you clearly had some inspiration on this dish. Oh, really? King of beef cheeks and kimchi combination. Every single day at Leroy and Lewis, this is what I would eat. This is what you eat. This so is this it. is my homage. Well, thank you. This this is how you test it. This is how we test the beef cheeks and the kimchi and the sauce. I mean, pretty much every day. I ate one of these today. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure <laughs> you did. exactly like this, but I did eat one today. I had one on Wednesday. We also have Mr. Wilson's Barbecue from the UK, everybody. Go subscribe to Dave. You've done it in one bite. So good. It's, it's everything you want. It's definitely a bit spicier than the El Nau one. Yeah, the kimchi is a little spicier. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Amazing job. The kimchi that you made is really good. I think I just want to try some of that by itself. Mm. I could eat this every day. It, it, is, be it is better than brisket. It's good every time. <sighs> yes, please. That was genuinely delicious. It's very good. In the UK, it's difficult to get a good brisket that's good fat content grass-fed brisket but beef cheeks are always good like, yeah. i wish more people would cook them all right folks without further ado i think it's time for the official taste test <laughs> <laughs> All right, John, that is it. That is how to make some absolutely fantastic, smoky, tender, confit beef cheek kimchi wraps. I highly recommend giving this recipe a try. If you've never made kimchi before, it is super tasty, and you can really dial it into your own spice level, funkiness, how fermented you like it. It's a lot of fun and super easy to make. Also, if you haven't made beef cheeks at this point, <laughs> What are you doing? But all that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button that YouTube knew by dropping a like on this video. If you give this recipe a try for yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Chud's Barbecue. I'd love to see what y'all are cooking. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you for supporting Team Chud and allowing me to keep making all these videos. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace.